Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, we had a bad rainstorm. Well, actually, the rain. I'm filming this, starting this on Friday, so that we got a bad rainstorm coming tomorrow. You know, uh, one inch is a lot of rain. Two inches is a tremendous amount of rain. Three inches is when everything's flooding, and four inches is forget about it. And they're looking at four inches. So. You know, uh, I don't know how much rain I'm going to get down here in the basement and whatnot. So I got to put things on blocks. You know, it's it's one of them storms that come every so often. It just kills you. Um, so uh, I wanted to do something quick today because I don't know what I'll be, what kind of cleanup I'll be doing for the next couple of days. Um, I saw something on Instagram, you know, one of those, or maybe it was YouTube, one of those shorts, some guy, and it had to be overseas had made a uh, a tool out of a spade bit. And I said, what a great idea. And I said, I'm going to share that with you. So let's come along. Let's make a tool. We always like that, right? Let's knock one out. And I this looks like a really useful, fun tool. And I think a lot of you can make one of these and will enjoy making one of these. So let's get started right away. Okay. Ever since I'm a kid, I've been a fan of the spade bits. Spade bits really come in handy. They do a good job, uh, especially if you respect them and know how to use them. And uh, they've never let me down. I really like these things. Um, this, I have a couple sets, different sets, different types. Uh, that's my favorite, the flat blade type. Now, if you have a bunch of spade bits, or old drill bits, eventually you'll come across one that might have been used for something like, you know, or hit a nail or something and messed up the, the edge. Now, these can be resharpened, and I showed that on a different uh, a different segment. But this guy, whoever did this video, what he did was he uh, cut the top off an old spade bit like this and made it into a scraper. So I went upstairs into my box of handles I have a whole a couple boxes of acetate handles because I'm such a big fan. And um, I came up with this one here I thought would be a good one to use for a, simple, a couple of different reasons. Uh, we could put a striking cap back here in the back because it's got that secondary hole. Um, also, uh, this is pre-drilled down about this far. Now... I don't want to go down that far. I only want to go down to here, to about there. Because you don't need, you're going to be pushing. You don't really need. But I'll have to have a piece of filler material fill up that bottom part of the cavity. Because this is going to press down. So I'll maybe turn a piece of aluminum or something. Put that in there that this can rest on. Then we'll heat this up and set it in. There's not, there's no pulling action. It's going to be a scraper. So you don't have to worry about them coming out really. Um... So let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this across here with a cutoff wheel. We're going to sharpen it. We're going to clean this up and make these into a scraper. And, you know, we all have bad ones of these or something. That's why I never throw anything out that, especially when it comes to a tool or something, you never know what part of this you can use. So let's get started. Now, if you don't have a, a handle available, you can use an old file handle. You can use a pre-made file handle. You could buy them online, inexpensive. These were given to me by my good buddy Hook from Hooks Outdoors. Uh, you can get something like this. It already comes slightly pre-drilled. You can fill it with epoxy. Or you can, you know, it's a great excuse to buy a lathe and just take a piece of broomstick and make your own. Now we're switching over from the flap disc to the cutoff disc. I'm a big fan of cutoff discs, especially the thin ones. This is 1 32nd thickness. That's what it is up there. It says four and a half inches. That's the diameter. Uh, 1 32nd thick by 7 eighths is the hole. And uh, that'll fit right on. To get these thin ones, they're great. They don't build up a lot of heat, which is important because you don't want to ruin the temper. And we're going to cut this right below that notch where this notch leads into. You don't need a lot of material. We'll fix it up with the belt sander afterwards. Okay, here we go. We'll straighten that up again with the, uh, the sanders. What we're going to do is we're going to make this flat across the top. Again, it's cool to the touch because... Uh, 
that thin wheel doesn't generate a lot of heat. A lot of sparks, but not a lot of heat. We're going to flatten this across the top. We're going to clean this up. Then we're going to bevel one edge, the top edge, okay? And uh, because you want a, want a single bevel going from one side down. And uh, we'll clean this up with the belt sander. And we're looking good. Now here we go, we just cleaned up the uh, the spade bit and we, we have it initially flat. We flattened it across the top, we have it a level. You could use it just like this, a flat blade it is makes a great pusher scraper. But I'm going to put a small bevel on here, you can see just as initial bevel, uh, we did it quickly on the 4x6 belt sander, making sure to dip it to keep the temper. And we can uh, adjust it from here and polish it up. You know, these are actually some of my most favorite jobs is making a tool, especially from scrap and things like that. That is the most enjoyable, rewarding thing you could do. So here we go. We have our scraper almost done over you know, the tip here. We're still going to uh, hit it with the fiber wheel and polish it out. But you see, I left this uh, kind of uh, hex down here. And the reason I did that is because, first of all, I took an old bolt this was uh, instead of throwing it out again you don't throw out the, the, an old bolt will make for the spacer in here I did kind of a press fit towards the bottom you know so I'll cut that off uh, at about here and then I'll epoxy that in and then I'm going to heat this up this tip and while there's some epoxy still in the tube I'm going to press this in because you can see it's such a tight fit that the heat will create grooves and form the plastic around here, which won't allow it to go anywhere. It'll be a strong fit. And then all we have to do is do the back. So a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Let's uh, cut that slug, glue it in, and press that top piece in. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, I epoxied the plug in. While there was still epoxy in the tube, I heated up the shift. I didn't want to heat it up to a change color, but it changed color quick on me. It, all of a sudden, I got a little bit of straw colored on the base, that don't matter. But as soon as I slipped it, it just melts right in there because of the uh, hexagon or shape that's in there. So now that's locked in, it's all dried, locked in. Now what we're gonna do is we have to make a cap. Now I go through my uh, box of scraps over there. I got all different kinds of scraps that are cutoffs, things like that, that I save. I, I could have made it out of Delrin, something like this right but i said no it's got to be silver to match here so i found a piece of aluminum i turned it on the lathe and uh it's a nice fit in here it's a little bit of a press fit but what we're going to do is just put a dab a little bit of epoxy that we can always take it out and it's one thing to remember if you make a real tight fit any time you're doing a handle or something if you're going to glue it in you have to have a way for air to escape because you'll get what's called a, like a hydro lock. You'll push it in and the epoxy will push it out. You'll push it in, the epoxy will push it out. So you either have to clamp it or, or have some way for the air to escape. With me, I, I drill a hole in the middle here so that the air can get in there. Also, I have little rings around here for retention. So uh, let's glue that up. We'll finish polishing up and I'll give you a demo of how this bad boy works. I'm calling this project done. Wow, look at that. How, how nice is that? That just came out so pretty. Uh, here we go. We have, the. we just did a, a light bevel on there. You could see the angle. You see the angle of that and uh, cleaned it up. Again, this was a one inch spade bit. Um, did the back here. How's, that's a nice strike cap, isn't it? That came out real nice. And then, of course, we we uh, used a little plastex on the on the handle. And there we go. This is now you can now again, you can have any any type of bevel or angle or even a flat. If it was perfectly flat would make a great scraper. But this one here is great for all kinds of work. Let's let's try it out. See what we can do. OK, we took some hot milk glue. You can see here it's stuck on there. 
this hot melt glue it's not coming off it's stuck onto this uh, corian take a scraper here this should be very satisfying to watch and sure enough look at that this is what see that how you can use something like this to uh just just really satisfying enjoyable to have a tool like this and uh let's see what else will lift up okay here we have some uh painter's tape painter's tape uh, don't stick that much but you could see here not only does it scrape up the painter's tape, but it's actually picking up some of the, the Corian. Again, another satisfying operation as it curls up that tape. <laughs> you are definitely going to want to have one of these tools. Trust me, this thing is a dream to use. Small scraper. You got to make one of these. I know you have a, a beat up spade bit somewhere laying around. I know my buddy Dave, old Sneelock, he's probably got a couple dozen old. <laughs> this is something you got to make. Okay, it's now Sunday, yesterday for most of you. And uh, we had our big rainstorm, big flood. And yes, I did get it. It was coming through the electrical box again. It was really good. I filmed it a little bit because I know some of you like to see that. Let's check it out. Yeah, bring it. Bring it. Now I know some of you are saying, man, isn't that dangerous? Aren't you wearing that? Nah, I wear rubber gloves. I'm, I'm protected. Anyway, we have a couple things to, uh, to get to. One other thing I want to get to today, now that, uh, that it's all dried up mostly down here. You know, it's, it only takes a day to dry up. Uh, and thank God most of that water went down the sewer. I want to talk about eBay. You know, I'm a big fan of eBay, have been for a long time. I don't go on as much anymore because I can't stand the fact they charge you tax on used goods. That should be illegal, and it it was for a long time. But anyway, um, that what I got, I picked up something the other day. I was looking on eBay, and at night, it was late at night. I saw something. I said, oh, wow, I'm going to. And I waited till the last minute, bid on it, and I got, I got it at a great price with shipping. I'm going to show it to you. I want you to try and figure out how much you think I paid for it when I'm showing it to you. So let's get to that right away. And here it is. Yes, check this out. A Taylor temperature gauge, but look at the size of this thing. It's huge, tremendous. Usually they're this big. This thing is tremendous. Now I'm just gonna clean up this little thing. We'll test it out and keep thinking. How much you think I paid for this now? Remember, it's pretty heavy. I gotta ship this thing, so. Just uh, calculate that in your mind, and I'll uh, clean this end up, and I'll okay, be right Okay, I just did a quick cleanup on this here. The probe, that probably goes into the tank or whatever that heats this up. And uh, if there's anybody out there that's worked with this tubing before, what's the best way to bend it back? Do you guys do it by hand? Do you use a tubing bender? Because I don't want to kink this, so... Any uh, any help in the comments would, would be appreciated. But anyway, let's see if it works. I'm going to get the heat gun, hit the probe, and uh, see if we can't get this to move. Okay, here we go. My inexpensive heat gun. We're going to uh, hit the probe and see what happens. Okay, it works. How cool is that? And uh, I just heated this up with the heat gun. It took a while. It took about, no, not quite a minute, but uh, to get it up to almost 190 degrees. You can see it falling down quickly now as it cools off. So uh, isn't this a beautiful piece? Okay, you ready? You're not going to believe what I paid for this. Okay, you know, the price I paid for this was $4.25. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, they hammered you for shipping. I paid $6.82 shipping. So for about $11, what a beautiful, absolutely beautiful, huge. This thing is tremendous. I don't know if it, it, it comes across how big this thing is, but I thought this would be something cool to hang up. I just maybe stick this into my, uh, my oil burner or something and have, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so in closing, that's a funny thing about, um, eBay, how that works sometimes, you know, when you, I got a good deal and I was like, wow, that was a great, when I got it. And then I went back to that seller just to see if he had any other items like that, that were kind of priced low or whatever, you know, but you know, it's funny. 
the seller sells mostly all sneakers, new and used sneakers. That's a big thing now, you know, high price sneakers and stuff. So he had dozens and dozens of listings on sneakers, no tools or anything like this. So how did that wind up in his, you know, whatever it was, it was good, good listing for me. So it was nice to, to pick that up. Um, in closing, I hope you do make that scraper. Wasn't that such a great thing? Hope you make one. So much fun, so easy to do. I think you have a great time. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.